And a sold-out crowd of East Lansing is on its feet. The final score, it's Michigan State 74, Nebraska 56. It is now officially Michigan Week. Back with more in a moment right here on the Spartan Media Network. This game was a solid performance against a team that's been playing pretty well. What really makes our broadcast work, I think, it's not like, here's the play-by-play -play guy, oh, and here's the analyst. Our approach is, here's our team. There's a real team, and there's a Matt Stigniga. And there's a third member of the team, Blake Froling. He's our broadcast host. And so, we talk collectively a whole lot about what we learn, what we think, and, and how we think it's gonna go, who's gonna do what. So there's a lot of dialogue before we start. You never stop getting ready for whatever's next. You're just doing it all the time. So you have this reservoir of stuff floating around your brain. And so when the moment comes, like in this case, up, up next is Michigan. Throughout the basketball season, there's a whole litany of things I've been reading about and saving on Michigan just because they're in our conference and we're going to play them and all this sort of thing. This is the file. This is the file for this game coming up. And Looks like I might need a new file soon. Go over all the team stats, the last game, look for trends. The format is important because we have a lot of cards and things we have to do, do all that. But here's kind of the, the fun part for me, right? Just a blank sheet of paper. I call that my canvas. So what this blank piece of paper comes out to be is something that looks like that. And this is my painting that I've done on my canvas. So this has all the information and storytelling that I need to do. Next up, I'll go off in a dark corner somewhere and study all my video, read the scouting reports. I think I over-prepare. And I learned a long time ago, don't force it. Half the stuff that I'm ready to talk about, we never use, because it doesn't fit. And so you have to be smart enough with that. But I love the task because you learn, and the stuff you learn going through that whole procedure helps you understand what you're about to see. And if you understand it, you can portray it better and explain why something happened. That's the process, it's not unique. There's nothing sexy about it, but it's thorough. And there's no way you can speed it up. You have to do the work to understand the most critical thing to do isn't so much when the game starts and things get a little crazy. The most important part is, for me, there's a magic moment where you, you need to find peace and quiet. And you need to look at everything one more time. You've looked at it, it seems like a hundred times, but just one more time before you say, okay, I'm ready. And so, if you can get that done, you're ready for all the curveballs. Here we go. Obviously, this is one of those games that is a little different than most we play. These games don't mean as much to you now, even though they mean a lot. But five and 10 and 15 years from now, they mean more. And that's why guys fly back. What you're entering into when you say hello, is an organized ad lib and you you know that it's the game never goes quite the way you think it might go you just know that going in and so it's really important to keep everything in the right order of, of events is that you really understand everything you prepared for there is a little rush there is some adrenaline going on and you do get nervous and I tell people that and they go, how's that possible? How could you get nervous? Well, you do. And I think you get nervous because you want it to be good. And then once you get going, you're just going and whatever happens, happens. And at the end of the day, you hope your team wins and then you get to go home and feel good. One of the first books I read that kind of opened me up to getting more wisdom and reading more was Chop Wood, Carry Water. 
This right here is the OG. I read this before um, I even had like my breakout year. This is what got me to the bamboo. Like bamboo is my screensaver is what I post about. Um, let me see. Um, what you don't see happening is what is taking place beneath the surface. Beneath the surface, a massive, dense foundation of roots is spreading out all throughout the ground to prepare for the rapid growth. So you keep watering it and watering it, and eventually, after five years of seeing nothing at all happen above the surface, the bamboo tree shoots up over 90 feet tall in just six weeks. And so I'm like, I want to personify this plant so it's like my spirit plant because it's like so many things happen that people don't see like you know you're going through this trial and tribulation and on a grand scale of the world no one sees it but you know that you're watering and you're becoming better and you're learning about yourself and learning from your experiences and then out of nowhere you grow into this you know amazing person that has so many things to offer um, and it's kind of out of nowhere sometimes because the things that I kind of go through, I go through behind the scenes. So this book is special to my heart. Inkster was interesting growing up there because I saw a lot. There's drug selling, there's violence. It's everything you can think of in terms of when you think of places with low socioeconomic status. You know, it's pretty tough. It's a small city right outside Detroit. It was normal to hear gunshots at night. We got accustomed to that. She saw a lot of different things that were, that could be traumatic for people to see. My role in that and her development with us that she could rise above her circumstances. I guided her through some of the things to help her avoid some of that. I exposed her to different things outside of our community, which gave her a unique perspective. And so from there, she got to choose what she wanted to do. My dad was a big inspiration in my life just because of the things he was able to overcome. He took it a step further than his family members and I'm hoping to take it a step further myself. My dad was a coach so I really was around the game since I was younger. My dad bought me equipment for every sport and the thing that stuck to me was the ball and the hoop. There were no girls teams at the time. So she started playing on the boys team. She would battle with the boys. It was physical. And there was a local league in our city and she was the only girl in the league. There were about 10 teams and she stood out there to her team. They won the championship. I just fell in love with the game. Like it just didn't feel like work. I just loved getting better. And after I got my first offer, I was like, okay, I'm hungry. I wanna keep going and see where I can take it and what other schools I can get. The storm at Baylor involved wisdom teeth surgery, losing a lot of credits, going to the bubble, getting a new coach, being set back by COVID. November 4th, I come get a steal in practice. I, I catch it, tiptoe the sideline on the left side, come down and me and my teammate are about to meet head on. So I try to avoid her and my knee just, I just feel it and I'm laying on the ground and I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, that's the only thing I could think to say. I go get my MRI, my athletic trainer called me, he says, K-Mac, I'm sorry, I do not have the best news. You tore your ACL and you tore your meniscus in half as well. I remember when I got that call, I got off the phone with him and the tears just flow. My initial thought is like, you know, it's no better way for me to be set up to accomplish my dreams. I do good at Penn State. I'm coming to Baylor to known for getting girls to the league. That's my dream. That's what I want to do. And I get hurt. I sat on my floor for maybe two hours. My phone was ringing. Everyone was calling. I didn't want to talk. I just sat there and I had a mirror Across from me, I looked at myself and I just thought like, what you gonna do? It's just us here. It's just gonna be us through all of this people come and go. And I'm like, we gonna fight.
I've never been a reader, but I woke up and I would read 30 minutes of the Bible and then 30 minutes of some type of self-help or a book full of wisdom. So then I would read something and I would go talk to my dad about it because he's wise. And it was like I prepared myself for adversity before I hit it. We were a two-person book club, so we were able to talk about them and how they applied to her life, how they were relevant to her situation, and those things really helped her through. And we just constantly consumed books that were self-help, positive things, positive thinking, ways to battle adversity and overcome some of the feelings that she was having, some of the grief, because she really grieved a lot you know, from the injury. I'm doing rehab in my room, so I got like a 20-pound kettlebell doing like squats, and then I have the blood flow restriction machine that I can use. So I would work out and do different things, but it wasn't like full-fledged. At this point, I was close to being released, but still wasn't progressing as good as I wanted to. It was just so painful, so weak. I finally was able to gradually get into the drills and stuff, but I still wasn't me. I still couldn't move. I remember this day because I was was pretty distraught. All transfers became eligible today. It's literally heartbreaking. To know I could have been playing in two days is ripping me apart. Everything in me is telling me to trust God, but I'm struggling. I've been praying and crying a lot. I just want to play the game I love. God, I trust you, but I'm hurt, and I know I can do both. I'm so close to being drafted and playing in the league and having all my dreams come true. I'm so mad. When they got cleared, I'm just like, I mean, you can hear it. I, this is what I really wrote. I was, I was upset. And then the rumors came. Kim Walkie's going to LSU. Kim Walkie's going to LSU. And LSU made it official just after about five that Kim Mulkey is heading back to her home state of Louisiana to take over the women's basketball program. Coach Kim Walkie had been there for 21 years, Hall of Fame coach, three national championships, was leaving Baylor the year I came. From that moment, I just, I cried. And I didn't cry because of her moving necessarily, but it just felt like Whatever could possibly go wrong or haywire literally did. I said, you know what, I'm leaving. And there's a chance I might not be able to play. I just made a decision from my intuition that I had enough. From January to June, I knew nothing about my future. I was training every day. I was lifting because I was like, when I get my opportunity, I'm going to be ready. And I don't know if I'm doing it for no reason or not, but I know if God does this for me, when he does it for me, I'm going to be ready. Her commitment to the process of rehab was extraordinary. It's, it's better than anything I've seen. I've seen players with injuries before, and they'll do the prescribed rehab, and they'll get back. But she goes above and beyond, which helped her process. Um, I've never seen her work this hard uh, in, her, in her life, and it really paid off. I'll never forget, I was in a mall. I get a call from Coach Susie, and I'm like, this is it. This is the, this is the verdict right here. I could feel it, like, in my body. That was a pretty special moment, mostly because we weren't sure if they were going to give her that year back. So she was on pins and needles. It was either she was going to have an opportunity to play the game she loved and end it the right way, or she was going to be done with her career. When I tell you, I just started screaming, and tears started to flow. It was like a weight has, had been lifted off of my shoulders. Everything that I've heard, everything that I've been told, you know, way more negative than positive, I still kept the faith and it paid off. And from that moment, I was like, God, I never doubt you again. A lot of kids don't know how to do hard, and she can handle hard. McDaniel wearing number five, goes to the cup. Are you kidding me? She puts it off the backboard and in for two. Every time a big bucket is needed, K-Mac is there with your answer. K-Mac left wing with a jab, a couple of them. Now she'll drive towards the right block. A floater hanging in the air, and she gets it to fall. Kamaria McDaniel is just too tough. McDaniel with the ball in her hands, I'm not surprised. McDaniel. Points. This is a 
Nebraska that's had five college coaches. And then you throw in a couple injuries. I mean, I think it just says a lot about her character. Even though she has had some tough things happen to her, she doesn't let those things that are outside of her control destroy her. Baylor didn't work out because it wasn't supposed to for my spiritual journey. And to a human mind, a carnal mind, it may seem like you were doing well at Penn State, why did you leave? But it's like, this is my spiritual journey. I needed to face adversity. I do not regret going to Baylor and everything that I faced there. I'm grateful for it and I love that for myself because I'm a more well-rounded person. I know who I am outside of my sport. Flory transition out to McDaniel for three left slot. Bang! Kamaria McDaniel, 18 points tonight. I showed myself how strong I am and I was able to build an unbreakable relationship with God. Romans 8.28, all things work together for the good of those who love God. Everything is working for my good, for your good, for everyone's good. I think adversity is one of the biggest signs that you're meant to be great. So I love it and I'm grateful for it. Unbeaten no more on the Indiana Hoosiers, the number four team in the country comes to East Lansing and will walk out with their first loss of the year. Reading really helped me reflect. I'm a better me and my situation is only giving me the wind I need to be the strong bamboo tree that I am. Your job is to make him better than he is. Your job right here is to make him better than he is. Make the guy next to you a little better than he actually is. That's what teammates are all about. I know what kind of game it's going to be. Starters, AJ, Tice, J.A. First four minutes is going to be real emotional. Pierre, when you get in there, real emotional. Control that, bro. Play hard, leave it all on the floor, bro. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. It means so much more, especially Michigan, Michigan State, in-state rivalry. Michigan sometimes is built upon the little brother, but it's passion, it's pride, and it's pride and rights as well. It's a wide out. The is zone is back. This place is absolutely packed, as you might guess. We're going to tip this thing off finally. for three. He got it! Yes! AJ dribbling around. Lob pass to Sogo. Slam dunk! It's good! And coach Jawan Howard has seen enough. He has called a timeout. With the ball, Walker down the lane. Back shot. Good! It rolled on the rim and through. Kohler takes it away. Now to Hogar, we're on a run with the ball. Malik Hall for three, he got it! Well, we got 3.14 to go between now and halftime. We got a 19-14 game. Michigan State is leading Michigan. Over to Hogarth, he'll try a three, he got it! Shoots over the top of Kohler, who's checked in. Jackson holds his ground. Tyson, he goes down the lane, scoop shot, good! Well, Dickinson switched out on him, and he had no chance to guard Walker. The Walker wide open for three ball from the corner. Won't go. It does go. Michigan's got the rebound. Here they come. And now driving the baseline from floaters up and in by Kobe Bufkin. And now look out. And Michigan State right now on a two minute and seven second scoring drop. Need a bucket. 
but the ball's tipped out to Hogarth. Now to Malik Hall, head fake, mid-range jumper out front. Malik Hall! Underneath Hogarth, bank shot, no tip. Yes! On the shot clock, nine, Hogarth. Spins, floater, oh my goodness! Side of Michigan. Shot clock was winding down and Hogard with the big shot. AJ Hogard has been terrific. 15 points. But he's done a little bit of everything. We now have a final from East Lansing. Final score, Michigan State 59. Michigan 53.